Since auto rifles are very hot right now, why not make an auto rifle tier list? We're going to be talking about almost every auto rifle that's not sunset, but if there's a weapon that you can't grind for right now and it's just not good anyways, I'm probably going to skip over that. And we'll also include the exotics as well. This is going to be a pretty long video, so without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start off with the 600 RPMs because they're the least popular and they'll be really, really quick because they're not that good. Starting off with the best 600 RPM in the game, the Gnawing Hunger. I'm not going to put any 600 above B tier because because to put them A and S tier would be a mistake since they're nowhere near 450s and 720s. Ever since the zoom nerfs, Gnawing Hunger has the most range out of any 600 RPM in the game while having the best perks as well. It has kill clip, rampage, tap the trigger, zen moments. So those are the main four that you would want and they're very very strong even on a 600 RPM. So with that being said, I'm gonna put Gnawing Hunger in B tier. This is the highest any 600 will go. Next on the list we have the Perpetualist. This is kind of close to the Gnawing Hunger but it has a few problems problems in my opinion that bring it down a little bit lower. The only damage perk it has that's really good is Golden Tricorn, which is actually a solid perk. It brings it to a 0.7 time to kill with only one stack on it. But if you accidentally tap your other weapon, and I mean just tap it, not even full on switch to it, Golden Tricorn will disappear. I don't know if this is a bug or whatever, but this is the only problem I have with this perk. And I know you could just say, oh, just don't switch your gun. But a lot of other damage perks lets you just tap the weapon at the very least or full on switch to your other weapon and switch back. This is kind of annoying and I had a lot of problems with it when I was using it. And another problem with it is if you're going with Zen Moments instead of Keep Away on this gun, you're going to have less range than a Gnawing Hunger. You're also going to have less stability than Gnawing Hunger overall and the stats just are not as good. If you do go with Keep Away, which I would suggest, you're going to have to focus a lot on recoil direction and that means you're just going to have a lot less stability overall because again, it still doesn't have tap the trigger. It just doesn't feel as good as Gnawing Hunger. The stats aren't terrible, so I'm going to put it in C tier. It's still okay, but not the best 600 in my opinion. Next on the list is the Sorrows Verse. This is the auto rifle from the Crucible, and it's quite literally a gnawing hunger, but a tiny bit less range. I'm going to stop comparing guns to gnawing hunger after this, I promise. This has a massive list of perks, one of the most out of any auto rifles in the game. Unfortunately, it has multi kill clip and not normal kill clip, but it's not really that big of a deal because there are so many different play styles you can go for on this auto rifle. The specific role I went for, I wanted tap the trigger and rampage. You could go for something else like elemental capacitor, especially if you play on arc if you want a lot of handling, or void if you want even more stability. The only complaint I have on this gun is the muzzle flash is kind of crazy. It is an arc weapon, and it is a Suros weapon, which tends to flash a lot while shooting. You might not notice this, or it might not bother you, but for me, it's kind of a big deal, but it is technically still as good as the Perpetualist in my opinion, so I'm still going to put it in C tier. It's just a visual thing that might bother you. Next, we have the Summoner. I think a lot of people were waiting on this one, because the Summoner was really goaded back in the day when 600s were destroying everyone. This actually has the best stats out of any 600, but the only problem is it doesn't have Zen Moment and it doesn't have Tap the Trigger, which is two very important perks for auto rifles if they shoot really quick. I know some people are going to be confused and say, hey, my summoner has Zen Moment. Well, the new one doesn't. For some reason, they got rid of it, so it's no longer part of the perk pool. So that means I'm not going to consider that when listing it here. Regardless of whether it has Zen Moment or Tap the Trigger, the stats don't lie. They are very strong, even without those perks. So I'm still going to put it in the same tier as Gnawing Hunger, sitting at B tier. And yes, technically the stats are only really good because it has an Adept mod, but hey, it's part of the gun. And if you're wondering which role I'd go for, I'd go for Moving Target and Golden Tricorn. Even though I was hating on Golden Tricorn, I think it's still better than Rampage. Next on the list is the Duty Bound. I'm not going to talk too much about this because it's not that popular and the scope is not that great either. The only reason, and I mean legit, the only reason it's going to be somewhat decent is because it can drop Adept, meaning you can put an Adept range mod on it. While while still having some solid range and okay perks with Zen Moment and Rampage, in my opinion, being the best duo. So looking at it on paper, I'm going to also put it in the C tier, but if you wanted to, you could put it also in D tier. Next on the list is the Last Breath. This has really good stats, but some of the worst perks for an auto that I've ever seen. The only decent thing being Dynamic Sway Reduction. This is pretty solid on an auto, but I think Zen Moment and Tap the Trigger are miles better. And the only other weird perk it has is Slide Shot, which I would never use on an auto rifle, even though it gives you range while sliding, you're just not going to use it the same way like you do with a hand cannon. On the other side, we have Adagio, which is the only solid damage perk on this auto, and even then, 600s with Adagio are not that great. It only brings the TTK down 0 0.08, which is absolutely garbage. So yes, you could use it, but in my opinion, it's not as good as the other ones. So this is going to be the first auto in the D tier list. 
Next, we have the Old Sterling. This is also going to be a quick one. It is Strand, which is okay. But other than that, it has garbage perks. The only easy damage perk to proc on this being Adagio, which we just talked about being really bad on 600 RPMs. And the other column, just forget it. It has Surplus, and that's about it. Since it does have some solid stats, and I don't think it deserves to be S tier, we are going to put it in the D tier, but I would not recommend using this gun. Next, we have the Conorak 22. This is absolute garbage as well, and the stats are hideous on this. This. I think this is going to be the first F tier we put, and I'm not even going to talk about it too much either. It does have Zen moments, but the range is terrible. The stability is okay. Handling is absolute garbage. Everything on it is just not that good. And if you're wondering why target lock is not good on 600 RPMs and just auto rifles overall, it's because the magazine size is typically a lot larger than it is on SMGs. And also with auto rifles, it's not as easy to hit every single shot like it is on an SMG because with a submachine gun, you're up close with autos when you're a little bit far away, you tend to miss one bullet every now and then, which makes the perk completely useless. Next, we have the Scathe Lock. This is going straight into F tier right off the bat, and it's because of the zoom on it. If you're wondering why I'm putting a weapon at F tier because of the zoom, zoom does not give you range anymore. Bungie changed this, so now if you have a lot of zoom, it becomes a lot harder to track your opponents when you're up close. And I know auto rifles got a range buff, but you're still using them somewhat in medium distance, and if you are medium distance with 20 zoom, you're gonna struggle, man. It's really hard. So the fact that it's zooming so much for no reason now is just absolutely absolutely terrible. And this is why this auto rifle is going in F tier, and I would highly suggest not using this gun, even if you have a god roll. That's all the legendary 600 RPMs. Now let's talk about the exotics. The Suros is a little weird because it has two firing modes. Whether you choose the 600 or the 360 is totally up to you. The 600 RPM on Suros is not garbage because it has spinning up, but the main problem with it is it still has very bad range. Even after the range buff, it's still sitting at 55. That gives you just about 30 meters of range which is still technically usable and your time to kill will be faster than other 600s because you have the spinning up perk, it's not garbage. It's just okay. That mixed with the fact that it has some good handling and good stability, I'm going to put the Soros in C tier because I would still use it over a lot of other 600 RPMs. And the fact that you don't have to grind for it also helps too. We'll come back to the Soros once we get into the 360s. Next weapon we have is the hard light. This is not good. Even though the exotic perk says it has reduced damage fall off, don't be fooled. It has 40 range, so the exotic perk can only help so much. This thing is still some garbage. Now, I know they did change the way that the fundamentals perk works now, so you get some extra stats depending on which element you choose, which is really cool. But unfortunately, every time you spawn in, it spawns you in with the void element, meaning you get more stability, but the gun already has 100 stability on it, meaning you have to change the element every single time you spawn in. No thanks. If you do arc, you could get some extra handling and range, which does help like I said, but it only gives you five range, which isn't really much. And the fact that you have to do it every single time again is not that good. I'm putting the hard light in D tier. I'm never going to use this gun and I suggest use a different auto rifle. Next, we have the Monte Carlo and I know it got a catalyst. Everyone was super excited about it. I can't say the same for me, but I can tell you that the gun is not that good still. Even after the changes with the zoom, the gun still sucks. It sits at 50 range, which is not good. And while Markov chain is not bad at all, especially if you're running some melee type builds, it's really not that great as a weapon itself. If you're relying on this gun solely for melee energy, again, just use it for that, but don't lie to yourself and say that the gun's actually really good because it's not. I'm going to put this gun in D tier. I would still use this over the Scathe Lock. Let's get into the 720 RPMs now. This is my favorite archetype of auto rifle because it's the most fun since you're tracking a lot. And let's start off with a really high note here because everyone knows it's coming. The Rufus's Fury. In my opinion, this is an S tier weapon. It's the best rapid fire in the game, arguably, if you get an adept version. Not only can it drop as adept, but it also has some of the best perks for auto rifles with tap the trigger and also paracausal affinity, which is very strong. It's basically rampage on crack because you can switch off of the weapon, switch back, and it also lasts for seven seconds if you get the enhanced version. If this weapon had tap the trigger on the other column, I would put this as the best auto rifle in the game, but the fact that you can't run tap the trigger and paracausal affinity kind of sucks. But regardless of that though, if you don't want to use a damage perk and you only want consistency, slap on tap the trigger and moving target and you have one of the most consistent autos in the game. It feels amazing. So if you do get an adept drop and you get the absolute god roll, you can be sitting at over 33 meters with a rapid fire, S tier, no questions asked. 
Next, we have one of my favorite autos as well, the Quicksilver Storm. I made a video on this recently, and I said I would use this over the Rufuses, and I still kind of feel the same way. The gun has 100 stability, 50 range, has a very good exotic perk, and the fact that you don't have to grind for it, it's really, really strong. And it's strand, just like the Rufuses. The only problem is it doesn't get better than it already is. The Rufuses, you can get adept, you can play around with it, change whichever perks you don't like. This gun is always the same no matter what, so if you want a damage perk, you can't really get one, which kind of sucks. I want to put it at S tier because I don't feel like it's A tier, but I feel like I can put it in between in the middle, make like a new tier and do S minus, and I'm going to put the Quicksilver Storm right there. A rapid fire a lot of people ask me about as well is the Sweet Sorrow. This is just worse than the Rufus's, but it's not garbage. It has solid stats and okay perks. If you had the option to choose between this or the Rufus's, pick the Rufus's. It's definitely way better because it has better damage perks and also has better range. I will say though, the one thing that's nice about it is it is an energy weapon, so it's not competing with the Rufus's technically. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the B tier. Very usable, pretty solid for a 720, but not the greatest. The Chroma Rush is a little bit special. It's one of the few rapid fires in the game that has Kill Clip on it, and Kill Clip on a rapid fire auto brings you to a 0.58 TTK only after one kill. Really strong. The good news is the range is not garbage. Sitting at 52, depending on which roll you go for, it's pretty good. The problem comes with the handling not being that great, and also tap the trigger is in the same column as Kill Clip, meaning you can't have both at the same time. I'd actually still use this over the Sweet Sorrow because Kill Clip is so damn good, but if I'm taking one into Trials, I'd actually take the Sweet Sorrow over the Chroma Rush because Kill Clip isn't as good in Trials compared to 6v6. Overall though, not too bad. I'd put it in B tier solely because it does have Kill Clip and you can go absolutely crazy with this thing. The Edelon Ally is a legendary version of the Necrochasm. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is not good at all. Very bad actually. Having range finder, which does nothing for your range, and perpetual motion, which is not useless, but also kind of meh, who cares? It has no other perks other than that, and I'm actually going to put this in F tier, because there's no point in using this gun at all, like absolutely none. Another garbage rapid fire auto is the crate. The perks are just garbage. It has Adagio and Overflow, which would be the combo that I go for, and Adagio is very bad on rapid fires as well, only bringing your TTK down 0.05, even worse than 600s. I kind of want to put this in D tier, but I'm going to put it in F tier because the perks really are that bad. Don't use this gun. An interesting weapon on the list is the Dark Decider. I was actually going to grind for this weapon, but after checking the stats out and seeing how it all plays out, it's really not that great of a weapon either. This is the Iron Banner auto rifle, and it can get some of the highest range out of any rapid fire in the game, but the problem is you're sacrificing both perk columns to reach this range. You have to go for Iron Reach, which is going to remove 30 stability from your gun, only to add 20 range. This is going to put your stability very, very low, especially for rapid fires, which is a no good whatsoever. On the other column, you do have Iron Grip, which is going to give you 20 stability back, but it's going to remove 30 reload. Now, after all of this, you could be sitting at about 60 to 70 range, depending on which roll you go for, but your stability is not that crazy at 56 with no tap to trigger. You have no damage perk whatsoever, and your reload is still at 16, which is garbage. You have to sacrifice a lot on the gun just to get the range that you could get on the Rufus's, but the thing with Rufus's is that it has damage perks and tap the trigger, and it doesn't have to sacrifice anything for this range. So I'm going to put this at C tier, I think, just because it does have the range to compete, but it's not going to feel anywhere near as good as the other auto rifles. The next gun is called the Arctic Haze. Hey, I'm going to save you guys some time here. This is F tier. No good perks. Okay stats, but nothing to really go for. Don't use this gun. Next, we have the Reckless Oracle, the last legendary on the list. This actually has Kill Clip, which is the saving grace of this weapon because the stats are not very good at all, having some of the lowest range out of any rapid fire in the game. This weapon should be craftable within the next season or two, which might help it bump up to maybe a C tier later on. But since it does have Kill Clip, I'm going to put it in D tier for now, and that's only because it has kill clip. The other column is really bad, the best perk being either under pressure or outlaw, which I would never use under any other circumstance, but you don't really have a choice here. Next up, we have the Tommy's Matchbook. This is F tier, and let me explain why. The stats actually aren't too bad on it, but the main problem with this gun is the hit registration. This thing does not register very good at all. Matter of fact, most of the gunfights with this gun, you're going to feel like you're shooting some ghost bullets, and I know it has really good hip fire for an auto rifle, blah blah blah, whatever, I get it, but the 
the gun just does not hit properly. And if your gun's not registering properly, it's just not going to be a good gun ever. So with that being said, even with solid stats and a pretty cool exotic perk, I just don't use this gun because it doesn't shoot people properly. It's really annoying to use. Last but not least, we have the Necrochasm, one of the funnest guns to use in this game, but unfortunately it doesn't compete well if you were to use it in Trials of Osiris. I know the new Desperation perk sounds insane, but it actually has a slower time to kill than Kill Clip, which is kind of depressing. At the very least though, Desperation lasts a lot longer, and you can switch off of the gun and switch back and still have the perk, which is awesome. The main issue I have with the gun, you guessed it, is the range. It only has 39 range on it, which is not very competitive in most situations, especially since 450s are very hot right now, which all have around 37 meters of range. So if you want to use this in quick play, go ahead, but I would definitely not take it into trials. I'm going to rate it in C tier because Desperation is really good. Next archetype we have on the list is the 360s. There's only one or two really solid ones, the rest being close to D or F tier. The best 360 in my opinion being the Abyss Defiant. This is the brand new 360 RPM that came from Crota's End. Not only does this gun get a lot of range, it also has some of the best perks in the entire game, and the new perk, Sword Logic. This is insane. This is like Paracausal Affinity on crack. You could also get Kill Clip on this gun if for some reason you didn't want to use something like Sword Logic, but I would highly suggest using Sword Logic. On the second column, you have Zen Moment, which is a no-brainer for a lot of auto rifles. You could also try a new perk called Heal Clip with Kill Clip if you wanted to mix those together. I heard Heal Clip isn't that great, but if you do find yourself struggling to take advantage of Kill Clip because you're weak, it could be a cool alternative. The main reason why I'm in love with this gun, though, is the fact that it only has 16 zoom. Zoom is very important to have low on auto rifles to make it easier to track. A lot of the 360s in this game have like 19 to 20 zoom, which is garbage. It's so hard to use. If you're wondering what a 100 range looks like on a 360, it's 39.52 meters, basically 40 meters. Absolutely insane. I'm going to put Abyss Defiant in S tier. I don't know if 360s should be in S tier, but they're definitely way better than 600s. Coming back to the Suros, the Suros also has a 360 RPM, but the main problem, you guessed it, when you switch to the 360 RPM, it adds three zoom, giving you 19 zoom total. The good news is the stats on it are really good, and you can get about 36 and a half meters, which is not garbage for a 360 at all. The fact that you don't have to grind for it, and it has some really good stats for a 360, I'm going to go ahead and put it in B tier, but I would never use this over the Abyss Defiant ever. Next on the list is the Lodbrock. Yes, this has 19 zoom just like the Soros, but this has better perks than the Soros. It has stuff like Kill Clip or even Tap the Trigger. It also has Fragile Focus, which is actually pretty good because this means you can focus mainly on handling and stability and don't have to rely on range at all. I would also rank this in B tier, but I'd put it over the Soros in B tier. If I had to decide which one to use, I'd definitely pick this one. Next one is the Gambit Auto, the Herod C. This is pretty bad and it has a very ugly scope. And just like the Soros, and Lodbrok, it sits at 19 zoom, but the perks are not that insane, which is a problem. It has so many options, but they're all garbage. So to keep things short and simple, this is F tier, garbage perks, really high zoom, don't use this auto. The come to pass. This got buffed as well, and it was very, very bad when it first came out, and honestly, it's still pretty damn bad right now. The best perk on this gun being Golden Tricorn, it actually increases the TTK a lot, but unfortunately, the other column is really bad, and the stats on it are also extremely garbage. So the fact that it doesn't have anything to really help the stability or the handling on the other column besides perpetual motion, which is okay, but not that great. I'm going to put this in D tier and only because Golden Tricorn makes this gun a lot better. And also the scope on this thing is very, very bad. I don't know if you like it personally, but it's really hard to see anything when using the gun. The last 360s we have are the two troll weapons, Cerberus and the Sweet Business. I'm going to put Sweet Business F tier because it's just not good. And as for Cerberus, I feel like it has a special spot depending on how you use it. I think it's pretty damn good for destroying crystals and stuff if you're playing Stasis Titan and only destroying crystals with it. And I guess it could be really good up close point blank. But the reality is if you're fighting against a 450 meta auto rifle, you're probably going to lose. But I wouldn't ever seriously use this gun. I'm going to put it D tier. It's not as bad as the Sweet Business, but it's just not that good. Last, but certainly not least, arguably the best archetype in the game, the 450 RPMs. I'm going to put four of them in S tier, and it's for good reason. These archetypes 
prototypes are so damn good, and they outclass basically every auto rifle in the game. The positive outlook, the Omit, the Fire Fright, and the Braytech Werewolf. All four of these being S tier without a doubt. The Omit is craftable and very easy to craft at that, only needing two patterns to get this gun. And it has the most aim assist out of any 450. Has the cleanest scope, it has perks like tap the trigger, and it's definitely the most consistent 450. And since it's Omelon, it has Omelon fluid dynamics, giving you 20 stability at the top half of your magazine. So it's no doubt S tier. Next one we have is Positive Outlook. This is quite literally the Omit, but with a worse scope, but better perks. It also has Omelon dynamic fluid, so it's going to have 20 stability on the top half of the magazine, but it could also drop with stuff like Kill Clip and Tap the Trigger at the same time. It also has Zen Moment as well. If you don't mind the really weird scope on this gun, you should definitely use it over the Omit. Overall, the gun is extremely strong and definitely deserves a spot for S tier because of the amount of perks you can get on this thing and the different playstyles you can go for. The Braytech Werewolf has one of the cleanest scopes for any 450 RPM. It's arguably better than the Omit. And this one also has basically every 450 perk you would want. You could argue since it's not Omelon, it's not as good as the Omit or the Positive Outlook. And I would agree with you to some extent because the origin trait on this one is not that great. The fact that it still has some very good stats and still has a very clean scope easily puts it at S tier considering it's a 450. We're finally coming up to the best auto rifle in the game, the Fire Fright. Yes, this is better than the Omit and the Positive Outlook. This can get a combo of Fragile, Focus, and Adagio. Adagio is really good on this specific archetype because it brings the time to kill all the way down to 0.64 from a 0.8. That's a big difference. And the reason why a Fragile Focus is very strong is if you go for a specific role on this gun, you can have 100 range with Fragile Focus. If you're wondering how much range that translates to in-game, it's 39.52. Yes, 39 meters on a 450. 50 RPM at all times, basically. So the fact that it has 40 meters of range with a 0.6 time to kill, possibly, is very, very strong and definitely the best auto for me personally. Next is the Shadow Price, and this is still going to be A tier because it's a 450 that can reach 100 range, but the main problem is that it doesn't have insane perks on it like the other ones. If I were to go for a roll on the Shadow Price, I'd go for Surplus and Swashbuckler and go for 100 range using the Adept mods. Overall, solid gun solid scope, just not S tier. Next, we have the 7 Serif Carbine. This is lacking a lot in terms of perks and stats compared to other 450s, and quite honestly, it's not that impressive. The fact that it is a 450, though, is its saving grace, so it's not terrible, but I would definitely rate it in B tier. It's not the greatest. The last weapon on the list is the Sentry Fuse. This is a solid auto rifle, and it could be very good if you have the entire meter charged for the exotic perk. If you're sprinting, sliding, or firing this weapon, it builds a temporary charge, increase increasing range and reload speed. If you have zero charge, it only has 47 meters, but as you're charging the bar, I'm pretty sure this gun can reach 100 range. If you're playing an arc subclass and you're amplified, this will actually charge the weapon over time, which is actually pretty good. So I'm gonna have to rate this gun in B tier if you don't play arc, but if you do actually play striker titan, which a lot of people do right now, you could put this in A tier. It's definitely solid if you get the charge going. It feels amazing, has very high handling, very high stability, and that's gonna conclude include the entire auto rifle tier list. If you made it to the end, thank you very much for watching and please drop a like on the video. This took a long time for my editor to make.